And I think this has set Padres fans back several decades. Billy going down to yellow and brown. That's what's in. I don't understand that's what's in. I don't, I don't, I don't even get it. Like, I, that, that's the worst part about it is that their repeated catchphrase is fucking garbage. Like, <laughs> How do you not think of something better than that's what's in? Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 158 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. It's been a while since we tapped into the mercurial brain of the one and only Stephen Brawl. It's a good Hello, word. Stephen. Hi, how are you? Not as good as you. Yeah. I'm good. I, I am hurting a little bit. I have a immunity and recovery drink, uh, but it's well worth it because I got engaged last night. Yay! <laughs> Said yes. So, you know, it's funny. Uh, so this year, you know, baseball-wise and everything was kind of like tough, right? So uh, nothing went as we wanted it to go. You know, there's injuries and moving and all this stuff. And uh, so last night, we had a whole spot picked out. I was going to do it. And I got there like five minutes before they, she was going to get there for, you know, I was going to surprise her and they had a private party going on. So ah. I had to audible and we went over to this wall and uh, I mean, it ended up beautiful. It was gorgeous. The wall is really like, it's cool. Arizona, the cacti in the background and everything. And her friends are there and set up our awesome, uh, you know, like, little engagement party and then of course yeah we go get wild a little bit because it's fun man but yeah we had a blast like it was so much fun and uh, all of our friends came out and you know my uh like my friends some of my baseball buddies that live here in arizona came out and we just had a great time so it was awesome all right i appreciate you doing this hungover oh yeah no it's no problem i could talk about baseball it was funny actually because like you know we're in the middle of doing this last night and one of my friends um Zach McKinstry, we got him from the Dodgers sure. part way through the year. He goes, uh, he goes, Hey, so I know this is like not the time to do this, but I kind of, like you want to talk some baseball. And I was like, Zach, I will literally always talk baseball. Like, yeah, let's, what do you got? And then we were, we were talking about, um, you know, the, the Padres Phillies game yesterday and, uh, and how all that went down and how the Phillies were kind of Phillies were kind of, you know, ball it looks like it looked like, you know, one of those days where it, it was just going to fall for the Phillies and they were just going to score a bunch of runs and everything. And then Padres said, nah, nah. But uh, yeah, it's a good game. My buddy JMO pitched last night. I mean, yeah, no, listen, cool. we're going to get to all that, but I, I, I want to stay on the whole engagement. You know, Ooh. God willing, you only do this once in your life. Yeah. So did you talk to her parents ahead of time? I did. Yeah, of course. I did. I, I did it all right. And like, um, you know, I talked, I talked to her parents. I got the, you know, approval, as you would say. I um, talked to my parents, like got our parents to go out. We had dinner with them. So like after the proposal, we had dinner with our parents uh, at our favorite spot here in Scottsdale. And then, um, then we partied till, I don't know, you know, the normal party time. We, I think we got home like one fifteen. We had some buttered noodles for, for our fourth meal. It's a great night. <laughs> it's a great night too early to decide when this big shindig is going to happen yeah i mean it'll be sometime next off season you know we gotta it's for us it's less about like we don't care about any specific day really we're just going to be looking at you know when we can get a venue that we like and yep go from there all i can tell you is this the only advice i'll give you is be an active participant i will be I will be. We've also um, we also just are, are in the process of trying to secure a house here in Arizona. So that's been who I, I've never bought a house before. So I didn't I didn't understand how much uh, paperwork goes into buying a house. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I'm signing something new every day. I'm just signing my life away. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. So yeah. Life is good, man. Life is good. I feel like happy a real adult. Thank you. Very happy for you. And she had a big old smile on her face. She dropped by right before we did the podcast here yeah so i think it's great i'm excited for the two of you uh you know let us know where you're registered yeah oh yeah stuff. yeah totally yeah no so, it's it's uh... uh by the way i'm not gonna like one up you or anything but that's not the only big news here with, with a family member of the rose rotation oh uh, yeah our our amazing producer rob Shiraco, 
and his amazing wife, Bree. Welcome their second child into the world. Yeah, nice. Bobby, congratulations. congratulations. I, Isla is Thank a big you. sister. She is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything's going well. Um, little guy came a couple weeks early, nice. but uh, he's doing okay. He's doing okay. Brian came home yesterday, so we're all good. Just plugging along, you know? Good. He just couldn't wait. He just wanted – he knew he wanted to be a part of these playoffs. He knew something special was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yankees are still in it. He's like, I got to at least watch a couple games, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Well – We'll see how long happy that you lasts. got here now and not during the World Series. Yeah, just in case. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so okay. congratulations! A lot of good things. We got a proposal. We have another birth. I got rid of my facial hair. Yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. I was going to mention that. I'm a little sad. Why are you sad? Well, I. Oh yeah, I know why you're sad. Sorry. Yeah. I... Oh no, no, not because of that. I moved on already oh okay well, never mind no i was sad i had to get rid of my facial hair the uh, the executive producers who are good good friends of mine here at battle bots they were like yeah you know what we've already got two guys who have beards on this show you were the last dude in so you're the first guy out <laughs> that's so funny it's like uh you don't really consider those things i guess but if you're gonna be on tv you know they want a a certain look they don't want three dudes with beards it's a lot of beards you know you got to yeah. change it up a little bit well, plus they said uh, one of the great things about you is that w you don't know. Nobody knows exactly how old you are. You could be what you are. You could be 40. You could be 38. You could be 45. You could be whatever. So whatever people see you as, you go with your beard. We kind of know what you are. Yeah, you look older. I mean, it's what happens when you got the gray in it, right? I mean, I guess so. Damn them. Damn but it. It's fine. I I still have to go clean shaven if I want to look good because it's just so bad. I try, you know, I try to grow it out. I had a little bit of facial hair like last week and then I still, I, this giant bald spot, man, it's just killer. Don't it makes worry. Me look so stupid. By your forties, you'll feel it. it it'll mm. fill in. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Or if you're like my 17 year old, it'll fill in. Really? He's got a full beard already. Dude, he had a full mustache. Uh, at 16 mm. full mustache he will have his goal was to always have beard by the time he was a senior in high school and he's uh he's a quarter armenian and uh you know i'm kind of furry too so <laughs> yeah my 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 family the, the men in my family there's one of my like my brothers have beards but they're not the best beards um better than mine i will say that but like my oldest brother usually has a good thick beard um but then the brother who's in the Navy usually can't have a beard, obviously, because right. he's in the Navy. But when he can, like when he goes on submarines for however many months and they don't have to shave when they're on the submarine, he'll just let it grow. And he'll have he grows crazy facial hair, like really fast. So he'll have this he'll come out just huge beard, you know, but they make him shave it before he comes off the submarine so that he doesn't look like an idiot. But he'll send us a picture of like this giant beard in a submarine. It's kind of cool. Like Zach Galifianakis, like, yeah, seriously, it's very similar. Like, just big, bushy, blonde beard. Yeah, um, submarine life. I don't think I could do that. No, nah, I don't think so either. He he's always been like he's you know he's not like antisocial. He has a bunch of friends and stuff, but he's he's always been the quiet type and doesn't mind you know being by himself and everything like that. Well, so. Not only that, I don't think I could be underwater that long. I think it would terrify me. Yeah, that part's always weirded me out. So he'll send me emails sometimes of like, you know, whenever they get to send an email, which is like maybe once or twice when they're out, um, he'll send me an email and like kind of go through the four ways that they all almost died so far that trip because like <laughs> these submarines, like, you know, they have fail safe upon fail safe upon fail safe, but like something will go wrong. Like things go wrong, you know, like, it's just like if you used a car all the time, they're just going to have to repair it. And it happens sometimes when they're out. It's crazy. Wow. He doesn't well, bother please, him. please thank your brother for everything he does for our country. I will. Very he's cool. a nerd. He's a he's a nuclear physicist. He's a oh smart dude. Yeah. Nuclear physicist. Mm. I play baseball for a living. So we're basically. How many same. years difference between you two? Two. See, I would have cheated off him all the time. Yeah, well, he, the funny thing is he wasn't very, like, he didn't get the best grades in high school or anything. He's one of those guys where it's just kind of, he didn't care. It was too easy for him. So he, like, mm -hmm. didn't do homework and stuff because 
Got it. Today's edition of the Rose Rotation presented to you by our friends over at Muggsy, the most comfortable denim ever. You have heard me talk about it. They are great jeans when you are in perfect shape for you. They are amazing jeans if you've got a few extra LBs like yours truly. One of the many things I love about Muggsy is obviously they stretch with you. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they've got this insane stretchable material, but it works. It makes you look good. It makes you look sexy. It makes you feel great. I've told you countless times when I put these on date night at home, Michelle Rose gives me that look like, you all right with me? Those look great. So I've told you about the grays. I got them right here. I like them so much. I got your classic blue. The wonderful thing about it, they've got way more than just those colors. So if you're the type of person that likes to go kind of flashy on top and you want a certain color to match on the bottom, they've got the entire rainbow and then some. It's like the old Crayola crayon box. You open it up. There's 64 different colors. That is exactly they want. you should roll. And of course, it's late October. It's going to get chilly outside. It's time to put the shorts away. You grab your jeans. You're going to love life. So go to Muggsy.com, use the code word JOHNBOY, 10% off and free shipping for the most comfortable jeans you have ever put on. I guarantee it. Once again, Muggsy.com, code word JOHNBOY, 10% off your entire order with free shipping. And I have yet to meet this person, but if you don't like the jeans, you can return them free of charge. Go experiencing life-changing comfort, courtesy of Muggsy. Well, you mentioned your buddy J-Mo pitched game one of the ALCS last night. We're taping this, obviously, on a Thursday. Um, do you get nervous when you watch your friends compete? Do you get excited? Uh, no, I don't get I, – I get excited. I don't get nervous. Um, I feel like there's enough nerves in their, you know, mothers and sisters and wives and girlfriends that I don't need to worry about that part of it. Um, so, for me, it's more about – yeah, like, it's cool. It's exciting. It's fun to watch. We're right now, you know, our, our friend goal, our friend group goal, how amazing would it be if we got, you know, JMO to start against Musgrove in the world series that like to start against each other in the world series would be insane. Um, but it was cool. You know, that, that Trevor was in the playoffs, you know, the Mets, but they got eliminated quick. Trevor Williams. Um, and then yeah, Tyone's with the Yankees and they're obviously doing well. And uh, it was, I will say it was cool to see the guardians do what they did. You know, it was sad to see him go, but it was nice to have a little bit of old fashioned baseball in the mix, you know, some, uh, some small balls, some hitting and hit and run, all that stuff that the guardians do a lot more than other teams. They just beat teams consistently by being better at baseball. You know, they didn't really strike yeah. out that it- stuff, but. I, I think the unfortunate thing is because I, I mean, obviously I loved it. It was my team, but Yankees out homered them nine to three. And that's the difference. And, yeah, you know, I just hope, because I like different styles of baseball. Like I want to see teams like the Yankees where sure that they rely on the home run. They're the Bronx I Bombers. See teams, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. But, but I want to, I just, it's hard because, as a Cleveland fan, it's like they need more pop in their lineup. They had basically one guy, Jose Ramirez, who's a home run ish hitter. He's you wouldn't even call him a home run hitter, but he's right. a home run ish hitter. Naylor can run into one occasionally. Andres Jimenez, same sort of thing, but they don't, you know, like the Yankees have like five guys that can do that. And that's a I think teams are just gonna continue to be pressured in that direction. And I like it when we see Balls put in play. I like it when we see defenders make amazing athletic plays like Aaron Judge last night. I love that aspect of the game. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And that's and that's why, I mean, for me, the that series ending the way it did, um, like I I wouldn't I, I I understand that the first thing you bring up is the home run differential. I I totally get that. That's that's a large gap. But they did they did go to game five. You know, mm-hmm. they won two games. They, that last game, it just, it didn't work out for Savali. And like you get put in a hole and unfortunately the guardians are that are built that they're built to get ahead and pitch through it. You know what I mean? 
Um, and so when they get down in that, that three round hole in the first inning, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be a hard, much harder for that team to climb out of that hole than right. say the Yankees who could, you know, hit it, have more chances of hitting homers. But, but like I said, I think, I think that they did it well and they did, you know, get to the NLDS game five and that, you know, when you get to that game five, it's basically like, Hey, let's hope we have a better day than they do today. <laughs> you know? So um, it was a good series though. I liked watching Very it. Good. It, was, it was, let me ask you this. When you've got buddies that are playing and pick pitching in particular, whether it's Jamison tie on last night, Joe Musgrove tomorrow, are you thinking along with them while they're pitching or are you able to watch it as just a fan? Oh, I, I can't, I can't watch it. It's just a fan. You know, we, we talk about, we talk about hitters. We talk about all that stuff, you know, before games, after games, you know, we have, we have actual baseball conversations there. Um, but it's like a, uh, I, I think along with it, I think more so with JMO. Um, Cause I think we, we pitch more similar E similarly than Joe and I do um, with Joe, honestly, watching Joe pitch is just, it's um, how do you say this? It's like intriguing. It's just, his slider and curveball both move so much, right? And it gets people like where he's able to throw that big, you know, not really 12 six, but big up and down curveball. Oh, oh, and it can, it lands right down the middle. People can't pull the trigger, you know, and that's just something I, I never really had that, that like really nasty breaking ball stuff. So it's, it's like, fun to watch and just seeing so this is how this is how just the nasty ones do it you know and he does it by he he does it by being better than the hitter you know his stuff is better than your stuff he truly believes that with everybody that comes to the plate doesn't matter who it is and so he he just hucks it and he's nasty man it's interesting because got first of all he's got like some of the biggest shoulders i've ever seen in major mm-hmm. league baseball right you maybe you can't tell in a jersey he is an enormous man. No, you know what's funny is the uh, the Padres right now are the all all shoulders team. So like the Yankees have Judge and Stanton, and those are like huge dudes. But the Padres have Joe and Josh Bell, who both their shoulders are about yay wide. You know, like they both. It's so funny. Like Josh and Musgrove both kind of. It's like cartoon character esque of like how you would build a superhero. Like their shoulders are just so broad. And then, like you know, they they're both like fit guys, so they they're like a triangle. You know, it's just like giant shoulders, and then it's crazy. Yeah, hey, I forget dude. about it. I forget you played with Josh Bell. I love him. I think he's a great dude. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, Josh is great. Yeah, really, really cool guy. Um, have you asked Joe about getting his ears rubbed on national TV? <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. It was it's it's just funny, like the fact that okay, so. I've never understood, you know, like checking somebody unless you have like a real reason. Like if you get a ball and there's sticky stuff on the ball, then I can understand it. But that whole check, like as soon as they, as soon as Buck started going out there, I was just kind of like, really? Like this, first of all, Joe is not the person to do this to. He's not the guy who you're going to throw off his game by doing this, stopping him. No, no, no. This is just going to put even more fire intensity in that you know he pitches emotionally he's very open about it and he always has been this is how his you know we talked about it a lot when he was on the show jake pv is his guy and watching jake pv as a kid he was insane all the time on the mound and joe's like that too so like doing this when you know you're not going to find anything because he's not cheating he's just amped up in the playoffs and he's throwing harder and his stuff is moving more for me it was just like as soon as i did i was like well, they're not going to get to him now. Like, no shot. <laughs> Were you watching this live? Mm-hmm. I was. Were you laughing? I was, yeah. I literally was laughing. I was I was texting our group chat, you know, like, I can't believe that they're doing this right now. Like, <laughs> actually, like, touching his ears. It was so funny. It's so funny. You can just see on his face that he's just like, oh, what are we doing? Uh, whatever. Who who's on that group chat? It's the same guys, me, Joe, James, and Ty on Trevor Williams, Chad Cool, the former Pirates, man. So it's just like I mean, it's just so yeah. What I don't know. 
like, do you have the right to say no? If somebody says, can I check your ears? Because, I mean, I, it's a no. different than asking, can I see your hands? Right. No, you definitely do not have the right to refuse. If the umpire deems it worthy to do, then he can do it, you know. I, I assume I assume they could go anywhere, but I don't know about that. Um, but it's like the if if you've got you know if you've got a manager coming out and telling an umpire I would like to check him, and the umpire says you know well like why, and then the Buck Showalter says I think there's something on his ears. I think the response from the umpire should be, is there anything on the ball? Like oh. you've we literally have seen you get baseballs like have you felt something on a ball? He, I mean, otherwise what's the, you know, there's no point in checking. So I, I don't understand really. I don't, the umpire doesn't have to grant the check. That's true. You know what I mean? So like, I, I just didn't really understand it because you would, if, if there was sticky stuff on the, like if he was using sticky stuff, it would be on the ball. So I just didn't understand it, but Hey, you know what? They checked his goofy red ears and then he continued and punched out the next guy. And, gave him a nice and uh sick now a word from our sponsor better help uh you have heard me talk an awful lot on this show about uh being in the right space mentally and mental health right when something's wrong with you physically when something is wrong with an athlete in the sports world if they got an ouchy elbow or a bad knee or something they don't try to take care of it themselves they go see an orthopedist right they go see a doctor that can help them get better that is something that you should be doing if you need help solving the world's problems. I mean, it's been a crazy last two and a half years. As it is, life is not easy. And the best thing you can do is treat yourself. Go talk to somebody that is a licensed physician that can help you get through therapy. Here's the great thing about better help. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, it is the perfect place. It is convenient. It is accessible. It is affordable. And the cool part is it's entirely online. So you're going to get matched up with a therapist after filling out a very brief survey. And you'll have a session. Hopefully you guys will click. If you don't, you try a new therapist. There's no hard feelings whatsoever. Finding somebody that you have a connection with is oh so important. I have made no bones about it. I have been in therapy on and off almost my entire life. I never see it as a sign of weakness. I see it as a sign of strength. It is important that you need help getting through certain things. So let's go do this. Betterhelp.com slash rotation. You'll get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash rotation. Go get the help you need today. We know that you grew up in San Diego with Joe Musgrove. Um how much are you rooting for the Padres? Oh, a lot. You know, it's 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 cool to see they've got um, like the city of San Diego is you know once again erupting into you know big Padres celebration, big Padre fans, all that stuff, and getting messages from friends of mine um, who I know you know kind of like baseball but don't really watch it, but now they're all engaged, you know, and that's that's how this works, you know, the team when the team is good, gets the playoffs, is doing exciting things, you get those fans who are on the fringe, you know what I mean? Like to really mm -hmm. come and start paying attention. I think that's huge for any city. And San Diego has got such a beautiful ballpark and, you know, it's talk about a good place to catch a game, but yeah, my parents have been going to all the games. Um, they're season ticket holders. Um, a lot of my friends have been going to the games, so it's been cool. Yeah. Um, it's cool to watch. Love. I always loved the Padres and now it's fun, you know, cheering for them when there's guys that I know personally on the team. And Will you go if they make the world series? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think that that would be, I mean, that would be something that would be hard to justify missing. You know, the problem is the problem is getting tickets. I don't, I don't really know how that works. Did you just say your parents have season tickets. Yeah. But also I think my parents want to go to the games. You know, how many season tickets they have? Two. I know, I know they'll get tickets for the World Series games if the Padres make. I mean, they got tickets for all the playoff games, so, um, so I might try to, you know, just finagle one from my mom and go with my dad. I'm sure she would allow me one. <laughs> like if uh, 
Who would they have home? Would they have home field advantage against either of the other teams? Well, definitely not Houston. No, they wouldn't have. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have it over either team. Yeah. Okay. So they would be three, four, five. They would be the sandwich games. Yeah, the sandwich games. I like yeah. that setup. I really do. Two, three, two. I think it's a good way to do it. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, I'm curious what you think. We had what three? Uh, well, two of the four by teams. The two by teams in the National League said bye bye. Bye bye. Right. Had LA a bye and Atlanta and said bye bye. And so there are a lot of people that are griping and saying the layoff is too long. It's not an advantage. Um, I I don't know what other way to do it. Where they're not going to take back a wild card team. They're not going to give back playoff TV money. So this is here to stay. I just say bite the bullet, do what you can't. Plouffe has an interesting idea here. He said the best way to stay sharp, he thinks, is take your triple A team bring it up and have them play against the major league team because those triple A players, although they're not major leaguers, talented and want to prove something and they will bring up the juice more than an inner squad game. will. what's your thought? Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a good way to do it. Like, um, and a lot of those guys, you know, they, they get held, you know, at the facility, you know, <laughs> that sounded like a prison. Um, they get held at the facility. Uh, they, you know, like any team that goes to the playoffs, they're going to keep at least five, usually 10 guys um, ready, hot. You know, they'll be, if the team is, let's say the Cubs, you know, they'll be at the Arizona facility, like getting ready, like staying ready just in case something happens. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like much of a stretch. I, I don't think the only problem is, uh, so since their season is over, I don't know how it works as far as like paying and stuff like mm. they would have that would all have to be figured out because you can't force the guys to come if you're not going to pay them. Right. You know, um, and it would be housing. You got to figure out housing, especially if, you know, if your team is going to be in the playoffs, then those four days, it might be tough to get, you know, 40 hotel rooms and stuff like that. Um so, I mean, I think there's there's a lot more complications that go into that than initially. But if the logistics could be worked out, you think that would be something that could keep those teams sharp instead of just throwing bullpens, doing inner squad? Does that sound like something that might benefit a team that's on a bye? Yeah, sure. But I also think that it's any team that gets the bye – and then loses is going to throw it on the fact that they, you know, didn't like the buy. It was too long, but it's not, that's not why those teams didn't win. They, especially the, the Padres Dodgers series, the, the Padres were just the better team that series, which is weird to say, but like, if you just watched the games, you know, the Padres played better. It's that simple. And I don't think it has anything to do with a buy with a few days off. I really don't. Yeah. Well, my complaint is this, because I kind of brought it up on social media and people kind of fired back a little bit, just saying, you don't understand baseball. Um, if you're saying that, like I said, hey, listen, just play better. That should be your mantra. If you lose a short series, the answer should be play better. And they're like, well, you don't understand if that's what you're saying. <laughs> and I said, well, short series have always been a part of baseball. There were times in the 80s where it was best two out of three in the league championship series just to get to the World Series. Just two out of three. You only get two wins. That's it. And, I mean, a five-game series is 3% of the regular season. A seven-game series is 4% of the regular season. The Pittsburgh Pirates took four games from the L.A. Dodgers this year in a row, I think, in L.A. Does that mean uh that the Pirates were better? Just for four days, it means they were better. So we always yeah. know this, and luck plays a role, and we get that. But what what else are we going to do? We're going to have a best of fifteen series. Yeah, it's okay. So my my little shtick on that is is like you said. Okay, if we didn't, okay, if short series were a problem, right? Then deciding games would always be a problem, right? Because if you play a best of 15 series, but you still get to seven and seven, you know, like it still only comes down to one game. It's the smallest series you could have. 
So I don't think that that has any, that's not justifiable at all. I do like two out of three better than the one game wild mm-hmm. card play in game. I do like that a lot more. Um, and it's simply because for me, we get more baseball and I like more baseball, but like, uh, I, I hate that argument. I also think it's funny that people are telling you that you don't understand baseball. These random, you know, people on Twitter who apparently understand it, you know, better than you. Right. Of course. Of course. Probably understand it better than me, honestly. Yeah. And they they've probably just, told me about it too. I just don't get it. I mean, we've played short series forever. Like, right. It's, it's the biggest difference between any sports regular season and the playoff series. I, I understand all that, but there's just no alternative. I mean, what do you want to do? Do you want to go back to the days where we just have, we just meet in the, in the world series. It just could have been the Dodgers and Astros after the regular season. Like that's no fucking fun. Yeah, no, this is, it's, it's asinine to think that if, if the series were longer, that they would be different. I think, I, I, I really don't think that's the case. I think that the better team, the team who is better at that time is going to win. And I don't think that changing the length of the series is going to change anything. The Dodgers and the Braves did neither of them went game five. Did they? The Dodgers are, uh, there wasn't even a game five. Oh yeah. Yeah. There were, wait, the Braves lost in four. Game four. Yeah, Dodgers that's what I'm lost saying. They, they both lost in four. So we're not even talking about getting – like, they didn't even get to game five. They got beat by a team that was better at the time. So, like, I don't – I just don't think that changing series length would change that. No. Hey, you NBA fans, the wait is over and basketball is back. So tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can bet any $5 NBA money line bet and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Check this out. In addition to the usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in, and place a stepped-up same-game parlay today. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. And with payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. This week, let's just take the defending champs, baby. Warriors, they're minus five and a half above the uh, over the Nuggets tonight. Just hammer it. Hammer it and then hammer the over. Same game parlay, boom. And then Steph Curry makes like 43 pointers. Just hammer it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE and make any $5 bet this week and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code ROSE. A minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Now back to the show. I want to hit you on a few other uh, baseball topics, starting with Shohei Otani. Oh, Apparently, fine. he got back to Japan. Mm. He said, listen, basically, paraphrasing, it sucked. Yeah. It sucks what's going on out here. I know that they're trying to sell the team, and so there's always the, well, if you're an owner, wouldn't you rather have Shohei Otani so you can try and convince him to stay long-term and all that sort of stuff, and I get that. But wouldn't it be in the Angels' best interest to trade him right now? You know... No, I, I think, I personally think that they should give it one more, give it one more season and actually just go get to, there's, there's a bunch of free agent pitchers. Go get to Grom, give him whatever he wants. Go get, you know what I mean? Go get like the big, big ticket dudes, get two of them, leave the offense, the lineup the same if you have to, and just see if you can get. Otani and Trout to pull a team up like they 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 totally could if Rendon actually plays and hits like he can like we all know he can but he hasn't for a while so it's like I get I get the idea of re- of selling but I think it's I really don't think that they've done that team justice I don't think they've really given it the full fair chance to like say here it is this is our one year, and if it's not working halfway through the year, then sell the team then. But I would hold on to him 
I would do it. I would, I would really give it one more go personally. But if you're Jacob DeGrom, would you ever consider a team that's only made it to the playoffs one time with the best player in baseball there the last decade? Yeah, I would sign a, sign a, a one, two year deal, whatever you want. Just listen, hear me out, hear me out. And just make sure you don't, there's no, no trade clause. You know what I mean? No. So they're because if the team doesn't do well halfway through the season, they're going to trade him anyway because they're going to do the Jacob DeGrom's rebuild. almost 35 years old. Exactly. If he can get a five-year deal from the Atlanta Braves, from the Texas Rangers, from somebody, he should take that for $240 million or whatever yeah. the hell they're going to pay him, right? You're right. Why in the world would you sacrifice probably your last maximum earning potential to go to a freaking organization that's got all sorts of issues and never makes the playoffs. Why would you trust that? Yeah, I mean, it'd wouldn't. be great for baseball, but it would suck for Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, well, you know, suck it up, Jacob. You know, <laughs> do it for <laughs> us. Do it for the little guy, you know. Go get your 50 mil a year for the little guy. That's incredible. Uh, no, nah, I know. I know it's not going to happen, but it, it'll be, I, I don't know, man. It's. They're talking about trading show. Hey, they probably will. They put a number tag on him. You know, he's 30 million next year. Who wants him? And he's still underpaid. Yeah. Well, this is this is going to be so tough. If, let's say Shohei plays for, you know, eight more years of like the level that he's playing at. Like, how do you not give him the MVP every year? I don't get. I don't get it. Like, I think they're going to give it to Judge this year because he because specifically because he broke the record for the American League. But if you don't, if he didn't, if he stayed at sixty, I don't think he gets it. In my mind. Yeah. D dude, Shohei's that good, man. He's that good on both sides of the ball. It's crazy what he's doing. And we're going to keep every year. It's going to be, if he stays healthy, it's going to be Shohei and then somebody else who is the MVP. And it's always going to be the same argument. Well, Shohei does not both. And how can you possibly, how can you possibly say somebody else who only does one side of it is better? It's hard. It's really hard to say. I'm obsessed with Shohei Otani. I Big am time. too. The dude is too. incredible. He really if is. If you had a vote, though, it would go to? Judge. Even though you love Shohei Otani? Yes. Because, specifically because Judge broke the record. That is why. If Judge hit 61, I still think I'd give it to Shohei. How funny is that? 62 puts him over the over the line for me. Because, like I said, otherwise thinking. you're just going to give Shohei the MVP every year. It's kind of like when Mike Trout was doing really well, and it was just like, why would you even think about giving it to anybody else? You know, I do think it's sad that we have already gotten Shohei fatigue. It's oh, everybody has. It's the shooting star of this sport. It's yeah. never been what he is doing has never been done, ever, yeah. ever been done, and it likely will never be done again. And everybody's like, yeah, but, but what? But what? Yeah, he's he's going to retire and it's going to be it's going to be one of those things, you know, you never know how good you had it until it's gone. Shohei's going to retire and every, everybody's going to be like, "Man, remember when Shohei Otani was pitching and hitting and like at an all-star clip at each at each one of them for a whole season? He had like 160 innings and like 220 strikeouts or something like that." Right? And then he has 30 four home runs hit 280 like what are you kidding me it's a joke it's unbelievable i wish people would appreciate him i do i do chris i do and i know shohei doesn't care that i do but i do not true he is an avid listener to the rose rotation is he now miguel rosa rojas is his favorite co-host but that's okay you're you made the top six hey right. as long as i make the top six you know if uh if i'll tell you what if Shohei were to uh, come on the show, I think I think I would be like that'd be one guy. He might be the only guy in baseball right now that if I got him on the show, I'd be like, ah, Shohei Otani. <laughs> you know, I'd be like nervous. I'd be like, oh, you're my idol. I love you. <laughs> oh my god, that's um, funny. Uh, by the way, the Mets fans hate you guys as Cubs because you swept them in September and you cost them the division title. I, I know. 
I know I was there. The Mets fans let us know when we were there that they didn't like us very much. That was a, that was a fun series too, because, um, you know, we, we played really good baseball that series. It was just a solid team effort that that series to beat the Mets. And, you know, they, it was weird, man. Didn't, didn't the Mets always, it always felt shaky, didn't it? Second half of the year, there was a, there was something off. There were times their offense just couldn't get it going and things like that. You know is what? Like be a interested? Mets thing. Is that a Mets thing? Like you just I don't. Think, does nobody really trust the Mets? Yeah, I think there's yeah. a lack of trust. There's a lack of trust. There was one year that they had like a seven game lead with three weeks to go, and they lost it to the Phillies, I believe. Um, so yeah, there's a there's they're a little bit like Cleveland sports fans where they're peering around the corner waiting to see which bus is going to hit them next. Mm. Yeah, it's always that sort of feeling. Um, they had an amazing. They won 101 freaking games, dude. They were a really good team, man. They were a really good team, but when Scherzer gets hit in the playoffs, it's sad. It's a sad day, you know. Like that, because I I am one of the biggest you know proponents of Scherzer, and I had a. I'm sure I don't know if I said it on this show or I definitely said it a lot in person to people like talking to people that in a I believed in a three game series I didn't think anybody would beat the Mets. I think if you played a three game series and you put Scherzer and Degrom for two games, man, that's gonna be tough to beat. And then Scherzer gave up six runs and I was like, what happened? You know, like it was it, it just that's the thing though it just happens sometimes. Just happens. And like the truth is that that's why it's good. It's a three game series. Cause they still had a chance after that, you know, they had one game where unfortunately their ace starting pitcher, you know, blew up and it's, and it just happens sometimes, but man, that was tough. I really, I really thought they were going to do something special. I was, I was when the Braves overtook them for the, uh, cause the Braves, they went to Atlanta and got swept mm-hmm. right, right yep. at the end of the season. Man, I was watching that series very closely and was just, ugh, it was tough. It was right. tough. Like the Braves clearly wanted it, and the Bra and the Mets looked like they just were trying not to lose it. It didn't seem like the Mets were like we're taking the division. You know what I mean? It seemed like we're like, oh, we hope we don't lose the division. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, let me ask you this, if you don't mind. Mm. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I, you know, I'm I'm as good as I can be. I'm rehabbing in the off season, so yay. Um, but no, I, I feel pretty good. We have different plans. I'm not going to really discuss yet. Um, still figuring some stuff out, but it's like, you know, got to do what you got to do, man. Last year, the last two years have been bad, really bad for me personally, health wise. You know, for the stupid lat that I have that doesn't seem to like me very much. Um, but, you know, we're working on some stuff, kind of floating some ideas around different ways. So if as things get further, hopefully, and they start showing, you know, working good signs, then I'll be very happy to talk about it. But for now, I'm going to keep it on the DL. I get but, it. No, I'm feeling good. I'm working hard, man. That's one thing that I will make sure that no matter what comes of this um, and my career as a baseball player, nobody's ever going to be able to say I didn't work hard enough. So. That's that's what I'm making sure about. Well, you got a lot of people rooting for you. I just care about you and your your mentals, as my man Marshawn Lynch used to say. My mentals, my mentals are great because now I'm engaged. I have a fiance, which is weird to say. I'm getting a house. I I mean, I'm 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 doing good. You know, I'm I'm I really am. I've had some really good help from some great people in the Cubs organization. Some great help, some you know, from my friends and my family. So. You know, when it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's a baseball injury. You know, it's, it's not life threatening. It's not a, a real thing. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a bummer, but you got to get through it. It's fine. We're rooting for you. Thank you. Chris. I like to pretend that your hat is a C for Chris, by the way, not for Cleveland. Well, when I really feel in a good mood, I would grab my Colorado Rockies hat, which I don't have since I'm in Las Vegas for two weeks taping battle box. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the CR. Oh yeah, it's perfect. That's really nice. That's the big one. Uh, I yeah. like a. Is it which one do you have? Do you have the purple with the black brim? I think so. Yeah, I think that's what I got. It's a nice hat. Yeah, it's solid. Yeah. How many hats do you think you have? 
I have I have one for every major league team. The one I don't have, um, well, there's two right now. I can't find my Oakland A's elephant hat. Mm. I think my youngest son Brady took it, and now he can't find it. And mm. for some reason, I never got a Texas Rangers spring training hat the year I got all the spring training hats. So I've got one that says like, like it, it's the one you if you went to Surprise Arizona to go watch the Texas Rangers yeah. in a spring training game. It says like. Texas Rangers spring training 2013 on it or something ridiculous like that. So, but I've also like, got a gazillion minor league hats too, which I love. Okay. I have a question for you. You know, when you watch these games and they have the commercials for like the, uh, what do they call them? They call them like commemorative bats. Hmm. You know, and it's like, ew, it's just like a silver bat that says Aaron judge 62 home runs, 20, 22 do people buy those like and put them in their house i i've seen one in real life that i i mean like i think my dad maybe had one but i don't remember i do remember my my friend's dad had a few of them in his like big old pod san diego padres thing and i was like but i I see that commercial and i'm like it's like the the commercials for the the gold coins yes the gold coin who wants the gold coins who buys those i don't understand obviously people do that i get it's like a coin collector right so if you have gold coins no matter i mean i guess they're not really part of a coin collection because they're just manufactured right yeah yeah and they're like you know so i guess it is the same thing it's ridiculous i've have you ever bought anything anything when you saw it advertised on tv if you call 1-800-777-4398 operators are standing have you ever called no never I've never called. I, the only time I've ever called into anything, I called into a radio station one time, and I won. I'm one for one on radio station columns. I used to listen to a morning show um, when I worked in the summers for my dad. I would, you know, I had like a, <laughs> this is funny. I had like a, a radio player and like, you know, headphones. And I'd put the headphones on and I'd be doing the work of listening to morning radio. And, uh, and one time they had a, event there's a thing where it's like yeah you know first first 10 callers or or no sorry like the number five caller will get four free passes to this water park in san diego and i was like pick up the phone and called and i won <laughs> and great. did you go to, did you end up going to the uh oh, water yeah. park oh, i got those tickets and i went yeah i had to drive down to the station to pick them up i think that was the first time i really saw like recording equipment like that and i was blown away and i knew that broadcasting or radio or something was a possibility in my future because i do think it's really cool that's it well i mean you have a great future in this but i want i don't want you to use it for another 10 years right that's all yeah, yeah, i mean I with that. the exception of this i want you I want to do myself. more of more of that first yeah more of that less of this less of this hey so how old are you? you're 30 right 30 yeah Mm-hmm. so do you remember the Padres making the World Series in 98 so I remember it in that um I remember the team I don't remember the games mm-hmm. uh I I went to a playoff game that year with my dad um and I think it was Atlanta and LCS yeah yeah I went to one of those games with my dad I remember because Ken Caminetti hit a home run like mm-hmm. a big home run in that game um but I also remember, I, it's so funny, I remember this show specifically, like going to my dad's work afterwards because he had to pick something up. Like, I don't know why I remember that. But so I did go to a game, and uh, but I didn't go to any of the World Series games. I believe my dad went with his friends, you know, because what are you going to do? Take four kids? Like my parents didn't have that kind of cash just floating around, you know? So um, yeah, man, I I remember it, but I think it's more so, you know, I remember the team you know, and I kind of fill in the rest myself. I I really remember when they were in like 2006, seven, eight, you know, when they had Jake Peavy and Chris Young and all those guys. Um, I really remember those teams, Adrian Gonzalez, Mark Conte, Eric Owens, Eric Owens, what a guy. He was more around 2000s, but yeah, I I love those teams. Yeah. Well, that's right. Your wheelhouse. That's when you're a teenager and you're good at baseball and you're loving life. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But then listen, I I hope, I hope you get to go to the World Series game. I think that would be a blast. Uh, more importantly, congratulations to you and, and Lydia. Um, Thank you. Before we do get out of here, mm-hmm. I, I am a little worried 
about the Padres winning it all. Okay, why? Because I saw a clip of this on a San Diego morning show, and I think this has set Padres fans back several decades. Billy going down to yellow and brown. That's what's in. Padres on the loose. Slow down. Let's go, Goose. That's what's in. Bryce gonna lose, and Manny's gonna cruise. That's what's in. Give Philly no slack and send them back. That's what's in. Okay, I can't take any more, Robbie. Thank you. Okay, so, Mike, when I watched that the first time, so, okay, so as soon as that came out, I got 15 people sent it to me, right? And I think I... What I don't understand, I don't understand. That's what's in. I don't. I don't. I don't even get it. Like, I, that. That's the worst part about it, is that their repeated catchphrase is fucking garbage. Like, how do you not think of something better than that's what's in? I can't do it. I can't do it because I think it's funny, right? Like, I think it's guys not taking themselves too seriously and having a good time and making this stupid song and dancing around. That's what I like to think it is. I like to think they're not taking themselves seriously, but that's what's in like, <laughs> I, honestly, that's happening is better. And I just thought of it right now. Four seconds. <sighs> Price is going to lose and man, he's going to cruise that's what's happening. And then that's what's happening. You know, like that's, that's what's in. <sighs> Where were you when they were, when they were writing the song? I mean, you're a San Diego guy, you play major league baseball and you freaking sing. This should have been think, your gig. I don't think I was at the uh, backyard grill that they were, that they were at roasting brats and having a few too many bud heavies. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my scene necessarily. We always look for turning points in a series. That might be it. I know. The the problem is, yeah, which way is it? You know? <laughs> I like to think how amazing it'd be if like the Padres are like playing in the clubhouse, like pump themselves up before the game. Everybody's like, Yeah, that's what's in. <laughs> Woo! Like, that's it like really works for them, like really getting them pumped to play, you know. I think Not Musgrove. Ironically. Musgrove should be forced to use that as his walkout song if he has to pitch in San Diego at some point in the rest of the series or the World Series. Dude, we, what, you know what? In my head right now, it's Musgrove went no hitter. You know, first no hitter in San Diego history. So of course, he you know comes here and then ends up this year ends up winning. Of course, like being the best pitcher in the world against the Mets that game three, uh, and then he ended up throwing the clinching game against the Dodgers. And now he's just, he's going to throw the clinching game against the Phillies. And then he's somehow going to line up to start game seven of the world series. And he's going to, you know, fucking throw a no hitter in game seven of the world series against the Yankees or the Astros. And it's just, everybody's going to be like best pitcher ever. And let's not forget about the most important part. He got the bag. He got, Oh, he got the bag. Oh yeah, he did. Oh yeah, he did. And you know, it's funny is based on what he did this year, if he does lead them in the playoffs like this, that's actually kind of looking like a deal for the Padres, which is crazy to think about because it's so much money. And it's the first time somebody I know personally has like gotten that money, you know? And so for me, like, since it's so close to me, it's like, wow, that's a crazy amount of money. But then if you really break it down to baseball terms, if he wins them a world series, it's like, man, he kind of got gypped. That's that's like that's like a 30 35 true ace kind of number we're looking at, you know. It's crazy. I think he'll make it. I think he'll be all right. Well, this was fun, man. Always flies by whenever you're around. Congratulations to you and your bride to be, Lydia. I think it's awesome. Very very excited for you guys. Uh stay in touch. I want to do this again at some point and if the Padres are in the World Series maybe even sooner than you expect. Yeah, I would like that. And and um yeah, if the Padres go to the World Series, I'll maybe uh, you know, get some footage from the game and such. Love it. So, it won't anyway. beat the uh it won't beat the time I sent you out when you were on rehab and um had the uh, uh the German the beer garden or whatever it was. And, 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 uh, singing along to the German like folk band. Yeah. yeah. That was, 
it was a good time. for the time I made you take video at the beach. Yeah, that was. I oh my gosh, I haven't. I've, I've never hated myself more. Or me. So. Or you? Yeah, or you. All right, man. Great catching up. Uh, special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, a father for the second time, the one and only Robbie Shirocco for the newly engaged Stephen Brault. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.